Hey math kids, um, we're in chapter 12b and we're choosing the appropriate measure. Um, there's no examples, so we're just going to talk about each of these real quick. This should be a short video. So we have mode, mean, and median. And uh, choosing which one is appropriate depends on a few things. So um, the mode. The mode um, gives the most usual value, so most usual value, and it only takes common values into account, so only common values, and it's not affected by extreme values. Okay, so those are kind of the pros and cons on that. Uh, mean is commonly used and easy to understand. So common and easy um, takes all values into account. All values matter. And it is affected by extremes. Okay, and then the median gives a halfway point. Um, it only takes middle values into account. And it's not affected. extremes. Okay, so there's a table in your book you can look that has that, that, has that same information on it. Um, so we're going to read three examples. So a shoe store is, investi is investigating the size of shoes sold over one month. The mean shoe size is not useful to know since it probably will be an actual shoe size. However, the mode shows at a glance which size the store most commonly has to restock. Okay. Um, so in this case, when we're saying shoe size, and we want to know the best seller, mode will tell us this at a glance. Um, if we want to know kind of like a in a sense like a range of values, but just like one value that can kind of tell us where the middle is, that's where we're going to find median. And so if we say size 5, then we know there's some on this side, half of them are on this side and half are on this side. So maybe we don't want to go up to a 14, because that's too big. Maybe we're going to stay closer to a 9, and over on this side maybe we'll stay closer to a 3. So, you know, it can sort of tell us that information. <laughs> Now the median, or whoops, sorry, the mean isn't useful because we could get an answer like 5.26, and we're like, that's not an actual shoe size, okay? Now um, let's read the next example. On a particular day, a computer shop makes sales, different uh, sale amounts. In this case, the mode is meaningless. Okay, so they just have like 900, 1250, 1000, 1700, 1140, okay. So the mode doesn't make sense because they're all different amounts. So the mode is not useful. Uh, the mean is a good measure because we just want to know average sales. And so that will tell us about how much we make per sale. Um, and that's pretty good. Um, the median ends up, uh, let's see. The, so they claim that the mean is the best measure of center as the salesman can use it to predict average profits. Um, the median 
would be a decent measure as well. Um, it would just tell us the, the middle of the sales, so we know half our sales were lower than that and half were above. Um, but yeah, the mean would probably be the best in that situation. And then one more. When looking at real estate prices, the mean is distorted by few sales of very expensive houses. So back to this computer problem. The reason why the mean is good in this case is because these are all relatively close. There's nothing that's way large or way small, and so that can help us predict things. Now, if we're talking about houses, and let's say we have like a 200K, 300K, 25 million, 50 million, and then the rest are like in this range. So if it's like more likely that they'll be in this range, and we just have two large purchases that will throw off the average, we don't want to use the mean in that case. Instead, we would use the median. Once again, the mode is not very useful because we're not going to see a lot of houses sell for the exact same amount. Okay, if you need additional help, come to Math Lab and tell them calculator.